Hi, so welcome to this video on um, some of the network tools that we're going to be working with in Linux. Um, so the first thing to note maybe about this is when we're looking at the command prompt over here, we're actually getting a lot of important information. Um, you can see here, um, this is my host name and my host name is my local machine. So another way to look at that is just with host name. Um, and also when I'm saying local machine, that means this is my computer that's physically in front of me. Um, this is not matrix yet. So that's an important thing to note because it's very easy to get lost when we start using the tools that I'm going to be introducing right now. So I'm going to use uh, this window over here and I'll leave this being my local machine. So this is going to become remote. I'm going to use SSH to log into Matrix. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to be entering my username. I'm use the at symbol and then the host name of Matrix. So I'm going to type that in. Or rather, I guess that would be the uh, URL. Anyway, hit enter. Um, usually what happens is you're asked for a password, but what I've done in the past is I uh, set up public and private uh, keys. There's one section in my lecture notes where you can see how you can set up um, keys for yourself. This means that you don't have to type in your password each time. Um, probably won't work on the lab computers just because they don't keep any of your files, um, but if you have your you know, laptop or something like that, you might consider setting up a, a private public key pair and then transferring your public key to your matrix account so that you can log in without using your password. Okay, so once we get in here, you see the uh, initial message, the message of the day, kind of. And um, now my command prompt has changed. So this is my username, and this is where I am. And so if I type in hostname over here, um, I can see that I'm on node 3 of our matrix system. So what is SSH? Well, back in the day when, you know, um, security was not as much of an issue, we might have been using something like Telnet, where, you know, we were able to communicate with a remote server or something like that, just basically using plain text, uh, no encryption whatsoever. Um, and then the world got a bit scarier with all hacking and whatnot. Um, so now these days we want to make sure that any of our communications are encrypted. SSH is going to use the same sort of encryption as what you would use for uh, HTTPS, which everybody should be using at this point. Um, so that's basically it. And so now when I'm here, um, everything that I do, everything that I'm looking at is in the remote location. Um, hopefully this is pretty clear to you after having done all the assignments and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like this is me controlling my local system and this is me controlling my remote system. Okay, so this is my local and this is my remote. Um, now we can use different utilities to be working with this. So one thing that I might want to do, for example, uh, let's go over here and let's go into ULI 101. And you can see I've put up a bunch of uh, sort of useful stuff that I feel like sharing. Um, one thing that I've got over here maybe is Frankenstein.txt. So this is my public domain um, novel that maybe I want to get on my local machine. Um, so what we're going to do with that is we're going to use a tool called SCP. SCP works very, very similarly to how copy works, right? Now, if I'm over here, if I want to copy Frankenstein, what I do is I give it the target. Yeah, see, so when you're typing it in, it helps when you actually point to the right thing. So this is my target, and this is the destination. This is where I want to put it, okay? With SCP, it's very, very similar, except that the two arguments, the target and the destination, of those two, one of them is going to be remote, and the other one is going to be local, okay? 
So let me go back to where I was. This is ULI 101. Okay. And I'm looking at the file frankenstein.txt. So on this side, this is my local machine now. My target is a remote location and my destination that I want is local. It's going to be right here. Uh, let's say that I'm going to put it in my home directory, right? So I'm going to use SCP. Now recall the um, remote location, like how I logged in using SSH. It's going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to use my username at matrix.senecacollege.ca. So that's all the sort of network information. I'm going to separate all the file system information with a colon, okay? And the next thing that I'm going to do is define, it's going to be the my remote home slash ULI 101 slash Frankenstein.txt. And then the second argument is going to be the destination. And the destination is much shorter because it's just going to be my home. Okay. So when I run this, if you haven't set up keys, uh, you're going to be asked for your password. But for me, I'm going to see my welcome message. I'm going to see a short dialogue showing me that this is transferred. I got it 100%. And I can take a look at what I've got now. So there you go. And you notice that my ownership is transferred to my actual user over here. So that's basically it. Um, some other things to note, maybe, um, when we're using SCP, it's very, very similar to CP. We have to have two arguments. We can also use the dash R if we're going to be downloading directories. Okay. And let's say, um, I'm going to maybe come up with a different example. So what I just had, what I just did um, just now was I created a local test directory. Um, inside local test directory, I've just put in some sort of uh, just, you know, I basically touched a couple of files with uh, different names and stuff like that. So what I'm going to be doing here is instead of um, pulling in a file from a remote location, um, I'm going to be targeting my local directory and I'm going to be pushing that to a remote location, right? So I'm going to take this directory and I'm going to be putting it on matrix. So first thing to note about this is I'm going to use the dash R because this is going to be a recursive copy. I'm going to be copying test directory and for everything inside test directory, I also want to copy that. Okay, so I'm pointing at test directory up here. Now my destination will be my uh, remote location. So again, username at matrix.senecacollege.ca. Once I've printed out that you know SSH information, I'm going to separate with a colon where I want to put this. So at the very least, I can probably say that I want to put it in my home directory. Um, that sounds good for now. I'll just put it in home directory. Okay. So when I run this, I get a little bit of information back saying all of these were copied. I get the message of the day. If I go over here. I'm still logged in remotely on the left pane. I can take a look here. And I should see something new test directory right there. So once I look inside, um, I see all of these new files and uh, notice that they have taken test directory over here. So notice that a lot of information, permission information changes. Uh, this would probably be my default as set up by UMass. Um, so by default, nobody can see these except for me. So I'm going to skip ahead a bit and I'm going to show you some other networking tools that you might find 
that you're using quite a bit. So um, the first thing that I want to show you is IP. If I give it just the argument of IP address, uh, what I get back is just very basic um, information about IP addresses and stuff. You can see here we've got two devices. Uh, we've got a loopback and we've got an Ethernet connection. Ethernet connection, often you see ETH0 as being the default. Um, so you can see the IP address for matrix over here. Loopback is not really an actual physical piece of hardware. It's usually used for, um, well, troubleshooting and basically stuff like that, right? So IP address is something that you would probably be using on like one of your local machines or a Raspberry Pi to just make sure that it's grabbing an IP address from your route or something like that. Um, the next thing that I can show you is NS lookup. So NS lookup is a way of looking at um, IP addresses from a URL. So if, as you can see, I can get uh, Google's uh, IP address, um, public IP address from their, from their name. Um, I can also go the other way around and just put in something. This will be random. I have no idea what I'm going to reach if I touch, if I do this, but uh, we'll take a look. We'll see if anything shows up. Can't find anything there. Um, but this could be one way of looking at URLs from IP addresses or vice versa. Um, another way, when you are maybe having technical difficulties with your internet connection, um, usually what I know people do is like, you know, fire up the browser, make sure you can reach Google or something like that. If you can't reach Google, it's usually a bad sign. Um, so the way to do that from the command line is to use a utility called ping. So for example, I'm just going to type in uh, 8888 here. We can ping this. And so the information I'm getting back from this is basically I'm getting time back. I'm seeing that um, this is returning in about 2.2 milliseconds. I'm going to hit control C just to um, cancel that and I get my overall thing. 18 packets transmitted, 18 received, 0% packet lost. So I know that this location is online and I'm able to reach it. It's pinging, it's like, you know, submarine sonar kind of idea. You're sending something out and it's getting returned to you and you can see that this thing is existing. Um, this IP address over here, if you're interested, is one of Google's uh, public DNS servers. So this is essentially the same as firing up your browser and making sure that you can reach Google. Okay. Uh, finally, I think what I'm going to try and do is show you wget. So wget or curl uh, will do basically the same thing. Uh, I'll show you curl. I just kind of prefer it in some ways. So I can type in curl. I can type in www.google.ca, something like that. And what I'm getting back is essentially HTTP. Um, this is a way of, well, if you don't have a browser handy, because I'm in a command line, uh, you can basically use this to try and reach uh, web pages. Uh, so one thing that you can do with this is, well, I'll show you one place that you can use. Um, I'm going to curl HTTPS, uh, HTTP bin.org. And um, let's see, I think what I want to do with this is I'll just try to give it um, anything. Okay. HTTP bin is a useful location to know about. It basically um, is a good place to sort of test, um, get requests, post requests, uh, stuff like that. Um, so what I'm doing over here is basically I can use this to be testing 
um, a restful interface or something like that. If you know anything about it, great. If you don't, you will maybe at some point. Um, and basically what I get with this is HTTP back. Okay. Um, this will probably become more useful to you much later on. So another way to be using curl is um, we can use it to download files. This is useful if you don't have a browser, um, but you need to be downloading like a, a file or something like that. So um, to show you that, um, to disconnect your SSH connection, you can type in logout, but I prefer control D and you can see I've just closed that. So um, the way we can use that is curl dash o h t t p s get that matrix dot seneca college dot c a. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm pointing this at my public facing um, internet uh, or like my um, website basically. When I do this, the difference between this and SCP is with SCP. You are logging in as a root, as a user. Um, you are typing in your password, and then you're able to manipulate your account from there. This is something that you would be using for the general internet, right? Um, so what we can see here is we've downloaded something. Let's take a look at what we got. Um, so, like I say, this is a great. This is one of the uses that we might use curl for is just troubleshooting and what we can see is instead of grabbing a file we have grabbed um, a 403 message forbidden you don't have permission to access this file well what does that tell you let's log in and see what's going on eh? so once again matrix.seneca college.ca and by the way if you um, decide to use ssh and you don't want to type in the entire thing every time, take a look at my lecture notes uh, for a shortcut. Okay, so you maybe know um, that all of your personal web pages are located in public HTML. So let's take a look there. Let's do ls-l. You can see probably what the problem is. It's always permissions, isn't it? So let's try this. I'm going to chmod for all plus R. Frankenstein. Okay. I'm going to disconnect from there. Let's clear the screen. Uh, let's see if we can get it this time. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that was a short read, but uh, if we go through, I think we'll find that this is actually frankenstein.txt and you can read through it. Um, anyway, I hope this gives you some insight into different ways of working with network tools. In terms of what you need to know for the midterm, uh, make sure you take a look at the lecture notes because some of these are just useful to know about and others um, I'm definitely going to ask you some questions on. Okay, thanks for watching.